Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today's video is highly requested. I'm going to be showing you how to make your own kombucha. So kombucha is basically a fermented beverage of tea and sugar, and it's really popular among the health community because it's full of good gut bacteria and probiotics. So this is what a basic home setup of kombucha looks like. And the thing that makes the kombucha is what I'm pulling out right here, and it is called a SCOBY which has a really fancy acronym, but you can basically just think of it as a circle of healthy bacteria. So there are three basic rules in making your own kombucha, those being no soap, no metal, and no heat. All of these things will negatively affect your SCOBY, so you never want the SCOBY to be in contact with these. Now that being said, let's just get into how to make your own kombucha. So step one is to get a SCOBY. So you should receive a SCOBY that's in about half of a cup of starter fluid from someone else's previous batch. You can also purchase a SCOBY online that is inactive, but that will have separate instructions. So this video is more for those who are receiving an active SCOBY from a friend. So after you get your SCOBY, the first step will be to boil some water. So in a medium sized saucepan, you're going to put three to four cups of preferably filtered water into the pot and bring this to a boil. This just kills the extra bacteria or toxins that may still be in the water. And while that's coming to a boil, you can prepare your brew. So for one batch of kombucha, you will need two tea bags. I use organic green tea. You'll also need one fourth of a cup of sugar of your choice. I use organic cane sugar. This is the container that I use. It's certified vegan, which is really important to me as a vegan because other conventional sugars are often filtered through bone char, which is pretty gross. So once the water has reached a boil, just take it off the heat and pour it into the bowl where you have set up your first brew. And when you pour the water in, it should pretty much melt all of the sugar, but give it a little stir just in case to get any leftover crystals. And then you want the tea to cool completely and brew for at least five to seven minutes. You can take it out after around seven minutes, but I just keep the tea bags in the whole time and I haven't really noticed a difference in taste with my kombucha. So once your tea has cooled, you're going to assemble the first ferment. So just remove your tea bags, squeeze out any of the remaining liquid, and just get rid of them how you please. So to assemble your first brew, you're going to need a glass mason jar that holds about four cups of liquid. And all you're going to do is pour the SCOBY and the starter liquid into the jar, and then pour the cooled sugary tea water into the jar as well. And the sugary tea is a food for the SCOBY, so the SCOBY will eat the sugar in the tea water and that will cause the liquid to ferment. So all you have to do is cover it with a little piece of cloth or a paper towel and a rubber band or hair tie to keep it secure. Then you're just going to store this jar in a cool and dry place for around a week. So after your first brew has fermented for about a week and most of the sugars have been eaten by the SCOBY, you will have a baby SCOBY on top of this liquid, which you can see in this video. And you can do one of two things with your SCOBY. First, you can choose to share your SCOBY with a friend. So all you need to do is remove it from the jar with non-metal utensils. The SCOBY will need half of a cup of brewed liquid. But before I put this liquid into the jar, I always prefer to strain my first brew just to get some little baby SCOBY strands out of the liquid and to make it smoother. So for that, you're just gonna need a glass bowl and a plastic strainer. This is the one that I use. And all you have to do is pour your first brew through the strainer and your SCOBY will plop out. Then just return the old SCOBY back to its jar. If you want to wash this jar before you put the SCOBY in, you can use a mixture of hot water and vinegar. Remember, we don't use soap. And afterwards, you're just going to distribute half of a cup of this liquid from the first batch into each SCOBY so that these SCOBYs can create future batches of kombucha. If you don't want to give your SCOBY away, you can also start a second batch of kombucha so you can have more in the fridge at one time. Then after that's done, you'll be left with some remaining liquid, which we're going to be moving on with to create our second ferment. So the second ferment is completely optional, but this is how your kombucha becomes fizzy. Basically what you're going to do is pour the remaining leftover liquid from the first ferment into a glass jar with one teaspoon of sugar. Then you're going to seal the lid on this jar, which allows for carbonation to accumulate. You can also add flavor to your kombucha at this point by adding some fresh fruit or dehydrated spices, but I just prefer to keep it simple and leave my kombucha unflavored. And once again, you're going to store this jar in a cool and dry place for five to seven days. And after this time, you can place your kombucha in the fridge for a bit to cool it down and it's ready to enjoy. 
Like I've said previously, I prefer to drink my kombucha plain, but sometimes if I'm feeling fancy, I do add other fruit juices to it during this step, just if I want to mix things up every once in a while. But that is pretty much it, guys. I hope this video was helpful for some of you and it inspires you guys to make your own kombucha cultures. It looks kind of intimidating at first, but it's actually really easy once you start to get the hang of it. And I absolutely love kombucha and I love incorporating it as a probiotic into my healthy vegan diet. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. Bye.